Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone. It's all uh, stand up, please, for our uh, morning service. Open our hymnals to hymn number 557. Hymn number 557, we did. Father, Lord, we thank you so much, dear God, for this time that we can come together once again, dear Lord, to honor you, Lord, to worship thee in spirit and in truth, to give glory to your name, Father, and to thank you for all the good things that you have bestowed upon our lives. Most importantly, oh God, for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. We pray, dear God, that today, as we are gathered once again, Lord, to Give honor to thee to lift thy name up. To worship thee, O God. We pray for the Holy Spirit, O God, to move in our midst today to give us wisdom and understanding. And praying, Father, for thy word to be clearly understood by those who will listen, dear God, especially those who have not known thee as their personal Savior. O God, that Christians would be edified, challenged, and even rebuked, dear God, by your word today. We praise you, O God, and we thank you for the privilege that we have to be together in, uh, in worship, dear God, and praying for the Holy Spirit's power, dear God, in the preaching of the message, dear God, and forgive us wisdom and understanding of thee. We praise you, O Lord, and we thank thee in all these things. We ask and pray in Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen. 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 Please remain standing and open our hymnals to hymn number. Five two four. In number five two four at Calvary. Oh, 
again to the morning worship service of the Metropolitan Bible Baptist Church Toronto, uh, the friendless church in the whole world. Amen. 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 Church Toronto, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, some uh, members of our church who are right there in their homes right now. I pray that all of you are uh, ready and prepared to worship the Lord. People here in our building, uh, thank God for your presence. Thank you. You may be seated now, please. And also our friends all over the world, I would like to greet you once again, a happy, blessed Lord's Day. Amen. As you join us today in our worship service, uh, may God uh, bless you today, not only by the preaching of the Word of God, which I hope you would, and also by the songs and hymns that our church prepared today. Amen. We have uh, uh, three special numbers today. Amen? And I hope that you're going to be blessed. Uh, uh, in a while, you, you'll be listening to them, including a choir by, by our uh, kids here in our church. And today, in the afternoon, we're going to have a Getting to Know You Fellowship here Amen. in our church. So if you are, uh, you know, uh, attending our church regularly, you're not a member yet, you're welcome to join us this afternoon. And if you have been a member of our church for the last one year, since September of 2020, uh, we would like to know you. So this is a Getting to Know You Fellowship. Uh, I'd like you to feel at home in our church. And those of you who have been attending regularly, you know, to uh, encourage you uh, to be part of the local church. Amen. If you believe that God brought you to Canada and this is where you're going to be, establish yourself. And one of the things that you need to establish yourself is the local church where you're going to worship God, not only worship God, but serve God. Because I do believe every Christian ought to serve God. Amen. And so that will be for this afternoon. And I'd like you to pray for all those things. Okay, for our uh, first special number, uh, I'd like you to listen to a song that I I hope would bless your heart. Amen. Calvary, his death will show 
so much Matthew for singing that song. Amen. This uh, boy has turned into a man. Amen. 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 Thank you for singing for us. And we have these kids uh, who are uh, uh, being taught in our church and uh, they're here in church right now to sing for us. I'm glad to listen to these uh, little kids sing for the glory of the Lord. I hope you'll be blessed as we listen to their song of today. Amen. Amen.
to hear children sing for the Lord. Amen. As early as uh, possible, we want to teach them the Word of God, and uh, it's wonderful to hear the voice of little ones singing praise to God. Okay, so uh, we have heard two special numbers so far. We have one more uh, before I give my message, but before we listen to the last special number uh, this morning, uh, we're going to listen to our operatory music. To remind us of our giving, you know, part of worship is giving. Uh, we believe in uh, giving to the Lord what is due to Him. The Bible says the tithe is His. And beyond that, we give our offerings, our special offerings, our missions giving, our sacrificial giving. Uh, we just love to give because uh, Christian life is based on giving. Man. The giving of God to us. So what we give to the Lord is also given to us by God. And so, by giving, we mean returning to God. So that the work of the Lord will continue, and the kingdom of God will be expanded, and we can perform our ministries that the Lord told us to do while here on earth. So may this uh, song encourage us to, to grow in the grace of giving.
thank you so much for that uh, offertory music brought to you by the MBBC Philharmonic Orchestra. I hope you're encouraged to give. All right, so uh, before I give my message, the Lord laid upon my heart to preach a message about the gift of life. Uh, now, in the time that we're living, just to be alive is uh, to be thankful to the Lord. It's good to still be alive. We thank God for the gift of life. Amen. May God prepare your hearts as you listen to the message. But before that, uh, let's all be blessed by another song that our church have composed. Uh, this is written and composed by one of our members. You know, she now graduated from uh, songwriter to composer. So uh, I'd like the culture to come and sing. Uh, the song written by Mrs. Uh, Abutanaden. of us? That's the question of the song. And the answer to that is because God loves us. Simply because God loves us. Amen. 
and God loves us, he gave us life. I'd like to preach to you on a message entitled, Thank God for the Gift of Life. And I hope that through this message, we will begin to understand now, God's great love for us, for men in general. God gave us life. We are here on earth because God gave us life. It is a gift that came only from God. So, I hope that beyond the gift of life, we will, we will see something more because God gave us more than physical life. Amen. There's something that God wants to give us Amen. more than the specific... Uh, physical life that we live here on the earth. So, if you have your Bibles uh, with you, open to the book of Psalms 36. Psalms 36. I'd like to ask the people here in this building to stand up, please. And we're going to read the Word of God. Psalms 36, verse 5 to 10. We're going to read this responsibly, okay? Psalms 36. Verse 5 to verse 10, and we're going to read this responsibly here in this building. Okay, Psalms 36, verse 5 to 10. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fact of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you would be with us, dear God, as we open your word and look upon it, dear God, and see in it, dear God, the goodness and the beauty of your love for us, dear Lord. I pray, Father, that through thy word, dear God, you will give us light and understanding of your love for us, your creation. That through this message, dear God, man will know about your love in redeeming us, dear Lord, from our sin through the blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to know eternal life and to be with you forever throughout eternity. And for your children, dear God, today, dear Lord, to behold how great you are in us, in our lives, and, oh God, that we would truly appreciate the love that you have for us. And because of that, dear God, to honor you with our lives and to serve you, dear Lord, for as long as you give us life. And we praise you, O God, and we thank you for all these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank God for the gift of life. Amen. You know, we know many things about life. And the Bible says that life is just like a, a vapor. You know, come to think of it, life is just short. Right. Amen. Uh, it comes to you suddenly. Speaking from a man who is not too young anymore, you know, uh, I live a, a a life that to me is a blessed life because I got to know God in my life. Yeah. But come to think of it, let me short. Now we're living in a time where we've been experiencing too many deaths. Make us to think about life. Make us to think that truly life is something that we should uh, enjoy because it is a gift from God. And so let's thank God for the gift of life today and beyond life. I hope you listen very attentively why I say beyond life. You know, we are perplexed by the nature of our concept of life. Even men or science, uh, they cannot understand, you know, life itself. Amen? And for that matter, death. That is within the realm of God. Amen? A man would like to try to understand the origins of life. Simply because they don't believe in the Bible, 
I don't have to know the origins of life. The Bible, Bible already has explained it to me. Right. That everything was created by God. Amen. You and I were created by God. I don't have to go to the outer space or the universe to understand the origins of life. Man. That is the way of man if they don't believe in a God that created everything. Mm -hmm. They go out to the vast universe to seek for the origins of life or probably to find uh, beings in another uh, planet. But I, but I tell you here that, you know, uh, even as man would try to look for the origins of life beyond the universe, it's already written in the Bible about life. We know everything that there is to know about life. Some people hate their lives. And some people end their lives simply because they do not understand life. And I hope today I could explain to you what life is all about. Man. As a true believer of Jesus Christ, we know that life is precious. My life is precious. Your life is precious. Amen. It's precious to me. You know, I I will look at life as sacred. It's precious to God. Your life and my life is precious to God. Why? Because God created us. Life is precious to God that He desires for us to have a new life. God wants everyone to have an abundant life. Not just to exist, but to truly have life and have life that is worth living. Amen. Amen. God wants us to have life that is worth thanking Him for. So I hope today, after this message, you can truly thank God for the gift of life. First of all, we need to thank God for his gifts for everyday life. Not only did God give us life, the life that you have right now is given to us by God. And God can take that anytime. Don't you, don't, don't you uh, realize that? Amen? So when you wake up in the morning, thank God. God is still giving you life. Amen? Now God gave us life. Not only did God give us life, God gave us gifts for our everyday life. Amen. You know, we thank God that he sustained life. He put everything in place to sustain life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You and I need oxygen to live. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen? Now oxygen is free. It's yeah. given to us by God. Amen. Thank God. Amen? Amen? Now at the moment when you are catching breath and you have, uh, when you are sick, you know, you're, you're going to realize that the oxygen that we take for granted is truly a gift from God. Amen. Right. Now, we know that the air comes from the leaves, from the trees, right? But, you know, the ocean is needed also for oxygen. Don't you know that? I think my science teacher failed to teach me that. You know, we need to also to preserve the ocean because... Uh, uh, it is a source of, of oxygen for us too. You see, we thank God for His gifts for everyday life. And I just talked to you about air. You know, our, our, uh, you call this, our banner here, our portrait here, uh, shows you water. God gave us water. Amen. Amen. It's free. Mm -hmm. Of course, what we what we pay in the city is. You know the, the service they do to to, uh, to purify the water, right? But water is free. We have everyday gifts for our everyday lives. We we praise God for His everyday gifts for His protection. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God for His protection in Psalms ninety one verse seven. Look at me. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You know, I do believe that God, you know, protects us if we pray for his protection. Amen? I thank God for God's protection. I would not come to this ripe age without God's protection in my life. I could, I could remember days when, 
You know, in in the uh, in real life situation, that God would just protect me. Amen. We thank God for His protection for many dangers. And we thank God for His protection for known dangers. Amen. 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 I cannot recount in my in my fingers a number of times. I do believe that God protect me from known dangers. Mm. There was a time that I would. You know, go to some places where they say it's very dangerous. But, you know, I, I went through uh, those places. I remember when I was still courting my my wife now. Amen. I would go to those places that people would say, don't go there. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right? But I would go there uh, for the love of my life. Amen. Amen. But God protected me. We thank God for his protection. From known dangers, from unknown dangers. Thank God. I've been, I, God is still protecting me from this COVID thing. Amen. 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 It's an unknown danger. And yet, I believe that if God would want to protect you. And if you ask God for his protection, he will protect you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his protection from dangers without. You know, the people outside. Every time I would pray for God's protection for me and my family, I would ask God for protection from men and their evil devices. We live in a time where there's a lot of people who will be a danger to us. Right? That's why we have securities in our homes. I have a, I have a camera in my home. And uh, a few weeks ago, I reviewed the camera. There was a guy, 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, knocking at the door of our house. And he was carrying a bag. He was trying to zero in what's in the bag. But he was he was knocking. He stood there for three minutes. You know? He didn't know what his purpose. I'm glad my wife didn't open the door. Huh? But we live in dangerous times. Amen? And so we need the protection of God and praise God for his protection. Amen. And sometimes you also need protection from ourselves too. Right, right. We need protecting from ourselves because sometimes a real danger not only comes from outside, it also comes from ourselves. Amen? Amen. Right. Sometimes we do stupid things. Sometimes, especially you young people, you do things that are very dangerous. We have children. And I would pray to God that God will protect my, my grandson because as a, young, as a young boy, you know, he needs protection. Amen? So we thank God for his everyday gifts. For his protection. And we thank God for his everyday gifts. For his provisions. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. The Bible says. But my God shall supply all your need. According to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Amen. You know I thank God for God's protection. In, I mean provision for my life. Amen. I The Bible, the Bible promised that. Uh, he will always supply our needs. And he did. For the many years that I have been a Christian, that promise of God to me and my family has always been true. God has always provided for all my needs. Amen. I didn't have to beg for bread. I didn't, I didn't have to, to uh, beg, steal, or borrow. God provided. You know why? Because He promised. Amen. The Lord promised that He will provide. Amen. He provides for daily provisions. That's why the Bible says it's called daily bread. Amen. I believe that God will provide for us on a daily basis. You know, when God gave uh, the Israelites manna from heaven. Can you imagine if bread would just fall from heaven? Huh? Huh? There was a time that the Lord would just... Uh, give the bread to the Jewish people right directly from heaven. And he told them, take as many as you need for the day. Right? Mm. Because I will supply every day. You know what they did? They tried to take more than what they need for the day. Mm -hmm. And the following day, they look at the manna, they're full of worms. Mm. What is God telling the Jewish people? Listen, when I promise 
that I will supply daily, I will supply daily. Amen. Amen. And we don't need to hoard. We don't need to mistrust God. Listen, if God says He will supply us with our needs daily, He will. Amen. Amen. Thank God for His provision for my life. Now, I don't need, I don't need a lot. Amen. God will give me what I need. Amen. And God is teaching us, folks, be satisfied with God providing for our needs. Now, the problem with us, man, is we want more than what we need. Amen? Amen. We desire a lot. We desire, we desire more. Listen, that's why the Bible tells us to be satisfied. Amen? Amen. To be supplied our needs is a blessing. To be uh, satisfied with God gives us is a virtue. Amen? Amen? That's why the Lord teaches us to be satisfied also. So God gives us daily provisions. God gives us timely provisions. Amen? Not only is God giving us things that we need, He gives it to us on time. Amen. Amen. So, not only we thank God for His provision, we thank God for His timeliness. Amen. How many times you have been in need and God just at the point where we are about to give up, God just gives it to us. Amen. You know why? Because God is teaching us patience too. Right. In everything that God gives to us, listen, His, His purpose is not only to satisfy us, God's purpose is to teach us too. Amen. God wants to teach us to trust Him and God wants to teach us Patience. Amen? Amen. Allow God to provide according to His time for us. Don't get ahead of God. Right. So thank God for His daily provisions. Thank God for His timely provisions. Thank God for His sufficient provisions. Amen. Amen. Uh, Bible says, Lord is thy shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen? Ang ibig sabihin po ng want, what you mean by want is you're not going to be lacking. I'm not, I'm not going to lack anything. I shall not want. I shall not be in want. Because God will supply sufficiently. Amen. Amen. And you know what? Here's the thing. Sometimes God gives you more, not for you to hoard it for yourself, but to share it to others. Right. Amen. Because sharing is also a blessing. Amen. You know, there is something about giving that gives you joy from within. Mm. Now listen, if you have not experienced sharing and giving, you are missing something of a joy that God gives to us when we do it. Right. If you have lived, you know, uh, with the attitude always that I want things for myself, listen, you are missing out on the joy of giving. So thank God. Listen, thank God for His daily provisions. Thank God for His timely provisions. Thank God for His sufficient provisions. Amen? Amen. And then, we thank God also for His everyday gifts, for His promises. Everyday gifts, for His promises. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great... They're not just promises. Listen, Christians... Look at the Bible. Here's what I say, that when you read the Bible, or when you open the Bible, you don't just read the Bible, understand what the Bible says. God doesn't only give us promises. The Bible says they are exceeding great Amen. and precious Amen. promises. Amen? Amen. Amen? Exceeding great, precious promises. Those are the promises of God. Amen. They are exceeding great and precious. Right. That by this he might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hey, listen, Christians, you don't have to lust anymore because God has promised to us great, exceeding, precious promises. Amen. 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 We don't have to resort to those wicked things. You know, every day, 
Every day I would receive calls from people trying to scam me. Right? And we have a lot of that. I think everybody experiences that. This is a call from the border official. <laughs> you have been charged. Right? They want to scam you with your money. Right. You got to receive emails. You are, you are uh, going to inherit $10 million. Uh, almost every day I would receive those emails. They just want to scam you with your money. Listen, if you are a child of God, God has promised to us great things. We don't have to resolve to those things. Amen. Yeah. You know, if you have the time, talk to those people. Hey, listen, why don't you get a real job? Hey, you, this is something better. You, get, you need to know Jesus Christ. Mm. You need to be saved. You need to be a Christian so that you will be a recipient of God's great promises in your life. And you don't have to scam people. Amen? Amen. Thank God for His provisions. Thank God for His promises. You know, there are thousands of promises in the Bible. This book is a book of promise. Amen? Amen? You know, do you know how many promises there are in the Bible? Many. How many? I tried to research that. I tried to look for the, the person that researches. Amen. Thank God for people who does the work for you. Man. Amen. 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 And according to uh, Dr. Everett Storms of Ontario, wow, travel Canadian. He spent a vast amount of time studying the promises of Scripture. And he wrote in a magazine called Contact, Contact Magazine. And he said that the Holy Scriptures contain a grand total of 8,810 promises. Amen. Wow. Dr. Storm said, how do I know? I counted them. Thank you, Dr. Stones, for counting for me. Amen. Amen. And he said, uh, there are 7,487 promises from God to man. Amen? Amen. And that accounts for 85% of all the promises in the Bible. Can you imagine that? Amen. Man. God's promise to man, 7,487. And there are 991 instances of one person making a promise to another person. And there are 290 promises from man to God. Mm. Can you look at that? Man. 7,487 promises from God. To money. Amen. What a great book. Amen. Amen. And he has written the promises in the Bible. Uh, sometimes people make promises to me and I would tell them, put it in writing. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes we, we cannot trust men with their promises. Amen. But I have the promises of God written down in the Word of God. Amen. God has put it into writing. And I can trust God for his promises. With that, I can have uh, all the promises of God every day of my life. And God's promises are true. Amen? You know, my life, I ask the Lord, Lord, make my life a testimony of the truthfulness of your promises. Amen. Amen. That's my desire. I want my life to be a testimony of how true God's promises are. And I'm telling you right now, He has never failed His promise to me. Amen. 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 I praise God that God's promises to me are true. Amen. Amen. And God's promises to you are also true. There are unconditional promises in the Bible. Now, let's listen. Listen. There are promises in the Bible that are unconditional. What does right. it mean? It means whatever you do, whoever you are, whatever you are, God made a promise, 
He will do it. Amen. 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 Those are unconditional promises. Now, there are also conditional promises in the Bible. And those promises, I call them a promise with a premise. Mm. All right? There are promises with a premise. What do you mean by that? I'll give you an example of a promise that is unconditional. Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is God's promise. That is God's unconditional promise to a child of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is God's promise to me as a child of God. And he will do that because God's promises are true. Now, there's, a, there's some, some kind of promise which is conditional. Bob says, for, uh, for all things, uh, all things shall work together for good. Mm -hmm. Amen? And some people love this verse. All things work together for good. That's the promise. What's the premise? To them that love God. Amen. Don't claim the promise if they don't love God. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, don't say you love God if you don't love His Word. Amen. Don't say you love God if you don't love to come to church. Right. Don't claim the promise. Because you're not following the premise. Right. I'm telling you, but we follow the premise. That's your end of it. God's end is to bless you. Amen. And I tell you, there are thousands of promises of God to men. Amen. Thank God for skips for eternal life. Amen. Amen. In Psalms 36, verse 6. Psalms 36, verse 6. Talk about the gifts for eternal life. Okay. Bible says the righteousness. It's like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great tip. O Lord, thou preservest men in this. Not only men, but you know, nature. God takes care of nature too. Amen? Amen. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Bible says that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven, he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So these are the gifts for everyday life for every man. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Even those people who curse God, the sun still shine for you. Amen? Amen. Those people who defy God and says there's no God, God gives, still gives you oxygen to breathe. Yeah. Praise God right. for His everyday gift for our everyday life. Amen? Amen. And secondly, let's thank God for His gifts of an enlightened life. I told you that God has given us the gift of life, but more than life. Man. What do you mean by that? Because God wants also to give us the gift of an enlightened life. What is an enlightened life? You know, Buddha is not the only person that is enlightened. Man. Uh, you know the word Buddha? You know? uh, Buddha means the enlightened one. Don't you know that a child of God who reads the Bible is an enlightened person? Amen. Don't you know that those who believe the word of God is an enlightened person? Enlightened means you have known the truth. And this is the word of truth. The word of God is the word of truth. In Psalms 36 verse 9, the Bible says, For with thee is the fountain of life. Amen? Amen. In thy light shall we see light. Listen, if you have God in you, if you have Jesus Christ in you, every child of God should be indwelled by Jesus Christ, we have the light. Amen. And we see the light. Now, if you have the light, you are enlightened. Amen? Amen. Thank God for an enlightened life because God can give you the gift of an enlightened life. What do you mean by that? If I'm a child of God, listen, God has something for you more than physical life, more than existing. God can give you an enlightened life. God has gifts for you 
for a fruitful life. Amen. Amen. You and I, Christians, are given God gifts to make our lives fruitful. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. Look at this. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Listen to me, Christians. This is the Bible talking to you. You are now light in the Lord. You are the enlightened one. Amen. 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 I don't have to take the lotus position and get enlightenment. I just need the word of God. Amen. I need Jesus Christ in my heart. If you have the Lord in your heart, you have light in you, you are the enlightened one. Amen. Amen. It says right here, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. As a child of God, I am walking in the light. I can walk confidently because I'm walking in the light. I, I'm not walking in darkness. Do you know a man that's walking in darkness? Huh? How does a man walk in darkness? Can he walk fast? No, he can't. I even doubt that a man in darkness can move forward. Mm. Amen? Because he's not walking in the light. Listen, we are a we're children of God. We are walking in the light. Amen. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23. As a Christian, we can have the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no Lots of fruits for the Christians. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now God wants us to be fruitful. Amen. Hey, listen to me, Christians. You don't need to live a barren life. God can make you fruitful. Amen. Because God has gifts for a fruitful life. You know, some people think the Christian life is a boring life. Hey, listen, I beg to differ. Amen. 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 My life is not boring. Even I go to Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, I read my Bible every morning, morning by morning, I would read my Bible, I would, I would pray to God every day. My life is not boring, you know why? Because God puts joy into my heart. Amen. 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 I don't have to go and follow the world, what they do to enjoy their lives. Right. I just need to be with God. And God gives me an exciting life. It may not be an easy life, but it will always be an exciting life. Amen. Amen. And I'm Amen. excited every day I wake up to see the goodness and blessings of God in my life. Amen. Not only for my life, for this church too. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. excited to see what God is doing in your life, Christians. Hey, listen, share that. Amen. Amen. People Amen. need to know how exciting our Christian lives are. Amen. If you are a child of God and you always talk about problems, there's something wrong with you. You are a lie that's being covered by a, a bushel. Huh? Man. You're like a candle that's being covered. You don't do that. You let your light so shine before men. Amen. That's what the Bible says. So it's not a boring life because if it, if it is a growing Christian life. That's my life, folks. Amen. I don't have to show you fancy things. I don't have to show you that I'm wearing fancy clothes. No. That's not the meaning of an exciting life. An exciting life is when you see the goodness of God every single day. Amen. Amen. Because, listen, if you live in wealth and riches, you'll get bored with it too. Mm. Amen? People with lots of money get, get bored with money too. Some people don't know what to do with their money. But I have a life that comes from God. It's, ex it's an exciting life. Doesn't have to be filled with riches. Has to only be filled with God. Amen. Now there's God's gifts also for a fulfilled life. Amen? Amen. God's gifts for fulfilled life. In Psalms 37 verse 4, the Bible says, Delight thyself 
also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. And how do I get the desires of my heart fulfilled? By making the Lord the delight of my life. Amen. Amen. Make the Lord the delight of your life. Amen. Huh? It's not 649. It's not the millions that will, will give you delight in your life. Amen. Amen. It's not money, it's not riches. If it's so, there would be no people, rich people, who would commit suicide. Mm. If money is the answer to everything in this life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Listen, make the Lord the delight of your heart or your life, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. 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 I call that a fulfilled life. And I thank God for the many answers to my prayers. Not only for myself. But for you, as a member of this church, my loved ones, my family, I thank God for God answering our prayers. Amen? Amen? There are things, listen, there are things in life that uh, cannot be bought by money. Uh, you, you can have money, and you can have a lot of friends. The question is, are they true friends? Yes. Amen? I have a lot of friends in this church. Uh, if you're not my enemy. But I have a lot of friends. Amen? And I thank God for that. Amen. I thank God for people that I minister to. People who acknowledge me as their pastor. I thank God for that. Amen? Amen. Take God's invitation in. In Psalms 34 verse 8. So that's right. Your old taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I'm taste the Lord. Amen? Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Amen. Many, many of us don't, don't experience it because we don't trust the Lord. And the Bible says here, it's a challenge to each and every one of us. Come and taste that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Simply trust the Lord. Make him the delight of your life. Because God wants to give you the gifts for a fulfilled life. You know, it is exciting to discover how God will work in his own way in our lives. You know what? What makes Christian life exciting is this. Sometimes when we pray, the Lord doesn't answer us the way we wanted it answered. Right? We want God to answer our prayer, and in our minds, we know how God will answer the prayer. Right? Or we expect that that's how God will answer our prayer. And God does it in a different way. That's what makes Christian life exciting. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. Amen. So here, here's, a, here, here's something I can tell you, Christian. If you pray, leave the answer to God. Amen. 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 Leave the answer to God. Because if you, if you tell God, Lord, this is how you're going to answer my prayer. Listen, God. No, you don't do that. Right. Huh? Lord, you know, I want you to give this. I figured out how it's going to be done. So listen very attentively. No, that's not the way you do it. To say you need to God, let God have his way. Man. Because what you're thinking uh, is so much inferior to how God will answer your prayer. Right. Amen? Amen. Listen, that's how God promised to us. He wants to promise or there are God's gift for a fulfilled life because God will answer it his way. It is exciting to see how God will accomplish things and fulfill his promises. And then we thank God for gifts for fullness of life. Amen. You know, there's a fruitful life, Christian. God wants to give us fruitful lives. There's also what we call 
fulfilled life there's what we call also the fullness of life you know people try to fill life with wealth and, and, and material things that is not the fullness of life huh? sometimes we fill our lives with material things we only clutter our lives we don't fool we, we don't have fullness of life if we do that I have seen people with a lot of things. Uh, but they're still lacking in their life. There's still so many things lacking in their lives. Hey, listen. God can give you the gifts for fullness of life. In Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, tell me. Is Christian life a boring life? Look at the promise. Look at this great promise of God. Man. Look. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So these are the promises of God. Because he wants to give us gifts for fullness of life. Even the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You know what the Lord said to us Christians? When he gave us life in John chapter 10 verse 10. The Bible says, The Lord said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come. Jesus Christ came to earth. I come that they might have life. Listen, I told you it's more than life. Right? And that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Hey, Christians, we can experience abundant life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, when people think about abundance, they think about prosperity, they think about money in the bank, they think about wealth, they think about riches, they think about success in their careers and profession. They think about material things, nice cars, nice furnitures, nice home, nice, nice vacation, everything nice. Listen, that is not an abundant life because I see a lot of people, they have all this, those things in their life. There is still emptiness in their hearts. Man. I don't have those things. I have some things too. Amen? Listen, in spite of having just Things I can have an abundant life. Amen. Sometimes God punctuates our our already abundant life with great miracles and makes it more exciting. And uh, as a child of God, as a Christian, as a Baptist, I believe in miracles. Right? But I believe in true miracles. Man. Now those Pentecostal people, they try, they want to do something magnificent. Huh? They want to do something spectacular, listen. There are everyday miracles that God performs in our lives. Don't you know Amen. that? Amen. As God molds our children from being disobedient to, be, to, to obedient, that to me is a miracle. Amen. Amen? Amen. As God molds your life. <clears throat> You know, to desire God and to walk in God and to grow in your Christian life and be mature, that is a miracle. Listen, I cannot change myself. You and I can never change ourselves. It takes the power of God. Listen, if God is changing your life, then that is a miracle God is performing in your life. As a pastor of this church, I've seen men and women change in this church. Listen, kapatid, naiiwanan ka na. Because I've seen people in this church being changed by God. Amen. And I thank God for God changing my life. People who knew me before can see a big difference. And being in this church for 16 years now, I've seen change in the lives of many Christians. I've seen families grow in this church. I've seen families become united in this church. Hey, listen. If you, as a child of God, 
there's not no change in your life you're being left behind mm. with God with what God is doing in the lives of many believers in this church there are miracles that makes life exciting I thank God that God has gifts for a fullness of life amen, amen. And now the most important thing, now, now we have everyday gifts for our everyday life. We have God gifts for an enlightened life. And most importantly, thank God for his gift of eternal life. Amen. Amen. I thank God that God gave me life. Every day I'm still alive. Amen. I praise God for that. Amen. Amen. And I, I have... Probably I belong to a class of high schoolers that are still, you know, interacting with one another, right? And I have a lot of classmates who already passed on. Well, listen to this. Huh? If you're a person my age, that's where you're going to be. You hear somebody, he passed away, he died. Right? Yeah. I have some classmates who are now retired. But I thank God I'm still preaching today. Amen. 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 I thank the Lord I'm still alive and well. God is still giving me life and strength and physical strength. I thank God that I can still preach and minister and see Christians grow and being trained and, and follow the Lord. I thank God for, for leading ministries in this church. I thank God for all those gifts for my everyday life, making my life full. But I thank God most of all that I have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank God that when I die and leave this earth, I'll be in heaven someday. Amen. One hundred percent sure as I am standing here, I'm going to heaven. What makes you so sure, Pastor? Because my Bible tells me so. Amen. What makes you sure? Because I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Amen. Amen. I have been saved by the blood of Jesus. Thank God for his gift of eternal life. In Psalms 35, verse 10. I'm in the last point of my message, so I pray that you you uh, you have patience. And, and this is the most important part. Amen. So thank God for his eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's right. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivereth the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. In Isaiah 43, verse 11 to 13. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Amen. I have declared and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, said the Lord. I am God. Verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and you shall let it. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, it says here, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Now let's go back to Isaiah 48, verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my call, I am he, I am first, I also am the last. Now this is the Old Testament, right? I look at Revelation 22, verse 30 to 16. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14. Amen. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you the things in the churches. I am the root, the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. 
that my friend is Jesus Christ the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end is the Savior and he can give you eternal life Amen. I preach no other person in this pulpit except Jesus Christ Amen. Amen. I preach no other system but Jesus Christ who says I am the way the truth and the life Amen. 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 I proclaim to you God has a gift for eternal life Amen. the Bible proclaim eternal life listen to me right here right now the Bible is proclaiming eternal life the scripture is where we will find the truth of eternal life in John chapter 5 verse 39 search the scriptures for in them you think in them you're going to find eternal life and there are they which testify of me Man. the scriptures speaks about Jesus Christ the, best, the gospel of the Bible is God's power unto salvation. Romans 1 verse 16. This is my text last Sunday. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, when the Bible says Greek, the Gentiles, that includes everyone. Amen. The Holy Scriptures will make us wise unto salvation in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 and that from a child that was known the holy scriptures which is which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ Amen. that's the reason my friend I have the bible with me here in this pulpit Amen. to talk to you about eternal life that God wants to give to you it's not my opinion it's not man's teachings it's right here is the word of God proclaiming to you eternal life Amen. the Bible is the only source of truth and everything else is man's fables in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 to 4 preach the word that's my instruction amen and I'm preaching the word of God to you preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all love suffering and doctrine for the time will come and they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own law shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hey, listen. Don't listen to fables. Listen to the word of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible proclaims eternal life. Amen. And I'm here right now proclaiming the word of God to you. And secondly, the Father promised eternal life. Amen. Amen. It's not only being proclaimed, just like what I'm doing right now. There's the promise of eternal life from the Father. In Titus chapter 1 verse 2, the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Here, my friend, is the promise of God. That he has eternal life. That he will give you eternal life. In John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. Only begotten son. And here's the promise. Now, whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. Amen. That's a promise of God to you. God sent his son. It's done. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came, died for your sin and my sin. God's end of the promise has been done. Jesus Christ came and he died for your sins. But the end of the promise, our part of the promise is this, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You want the promise of God to be true to your life? Then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. And lastly, the Bible proclaims eternal life. The Father promised eternal life. Jesus Christ provided for our Amen. eternal life. Right. Amen. The promise eternal life 
is found only in Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, and this is the record. But God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Yeah. Amen. This eternal life is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not found in any religion. Right. It is not found in the Baptist church. It is not found in the Catholic church. Amen. It is not found in the Protestant church. It is not found in the Iglesia de Cristo church. It is only in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Eternal life is only in Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Jesus Christ died and rose again that through him we can have eternal life. Right. Amen. That eternal life is being given as a gift and all we need to do is receive it. In Romans 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God. Again, this gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There can never be any salvation without Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. To receive the gift, we should receive Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Eternal life is a gift. So, how do we receive the gift? You receive Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the gift. Amen. He Himself is the gift. Jesus Christ himself is the one who died on the cross. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. No one goes to heaven where the Father is, but by Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have the Son, I'm going to close with this. If you have the Son, if you have Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Amen. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. If you have the Son, if you have Jesus Christ, you have life. And to be clear about this, He that hath not the Son of God Hot, not life. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the Son of God in you, you don't have life. You can have religion. You can have all kinds of philosophy. You might be a good person. You have done all these things, but if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you don't have eternal life. Right. Amen. Question is this. Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart right now? Maybe what you have is religion. Religion is not Jesus Christ. Maybe you have good works. Yes, that's fine. I applaud you for that. But good works is not Jesus Christ. Maybe you have you have uh, many many uh, uh, titles. Huh? You have many uh, studies made. You're 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 full of wisdom if so many philosophies but listen your knowledge and wisdom is not Jesus Christ Amen. only Jesus Christ can give you eternal life and today my friends I'm not here to make Baptists out of you I'm here to tell you that eternal life is only through Jesus Christ do you have that gift of eternal life Yes, you can thank God for life. And I would thank God for life every day. But can you thank God for eternal life? Yes. You can today if you will have eternal life. And how can I have eternal life? The Bible says if you have the Son, you have eternal life. Yes. All you need to do, my friend, today is trust Jesus Christ today. Let Jesus Christ come into your life as your personal Savior. Let him come to you. Be his savior. Uh, be your savior. Let Jesus Christ be your savior today. And let him come to you. Invite him into your heart today. God's gift is offering it. 
He's proclaiming it. The Father is promising it. And God, the Lord Jesus Christ, has provided it. And all you need to do is accept it. Would you? Would you accept the gift of eternal life today? Yes, I'm talking to you, my friends. I'm talking to my loved ones. I'm talking to all of you today who are watching. More than life and physical life, God wants to give you eternal life. To spend eternity in heaven with God our Father. With a life that has been redeemed from sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. Would you come to God today and say, Lord, I want to trust Jesus Christ. For in Him only is eternal life. Would you make Jesus Christ the Savior of your life? To forsake the thought that it's religion that will save you. To forsake the thought that it's your good works that will save you. But to claim Jesus Christ alone to be the Savior of your souls. Would you trust Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior? I hope you would. You're saying right now, Pastor, I want to receive eternal life. What do I do? Here's what you need to do. Open your heart today and trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Call upon His name and make Him the Savior of your life today. You can say a prayer like this. Lord, I'm a sinner. Because of my sin, I'm lost and bound for hell. But I realize the love of the Father and He wants to give me eternal life through Jesus Christ who died for my sins. I would like to trust Jesus Christ for what He did on the cross for me. To be covered by the blood of Jesus. To be forgiven and redeemed of my sins. For Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of my soul. To receive the gift of eternal life. A simple prayer. A prayer of repentance. A prayer of acceptance. A prayer of trust in Jesus Christ alone to be the Savior of your soul. You do that, my friend, by faith. Bible says, for with the heart Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I hope today that you will trust Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Savior. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your patience. Christians, you believe you have eternal life. Then thank God for eternal life that you have. Enjoy an enlightened life in Jesus Christ and share eternal life to others. Shall we Amen. close in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your word. Thank you, O oh God, for your everyday gifts, for our everyday lives. Thank you, O oh God, for your promises, for all the gifts, dear God, for an enlightened life, an exciting Christian life. And most especially, O oh God, I thank you for the gift of eternal life that can only be found in Jesus Christ. I'm praying to, today, dear God, that through your word, the people will come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I pray, oh God, that my loved ones who will come to hear this message will trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. To forsake religion as the means for their salvation, to forsake good works as the means for their salvation, but simply trust in Jesus Christ alone. For Jesus Christ himself died on the cross. And no one else to redeem me from my sins. Pray, O oh God, for our friends to come to the knowledge of truth today. And I pray, dear God, that your word will not return to you void. But it will accomplish its purpose. Thank you, O oh God, for your message today. All these things we pray in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, my friends. Our friends who are who have just joined us, thank you for joining us every Sunday.
Please make your presence known, uh, give comments, and to those who have listened for the first time and you understood the message, you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let us know. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So thank you so much, church. Thank you for uh, being here in this building. And those at home, thank you for listening in and worshiping the Lord together. God bless you. You are. Amen.